Share poopy. Share poopy. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of The Imaginary Boys. I am one of the two hosts, Mr. Habanero, and I have my secondary host, Mr. Sexy Boy Lettuce. How are you doing, Lettuce? How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing okay. Uh, caught you again doing the messing up our intro. <laughs> Shut up. You're gaslighting me every time. Like, I know you are. You oh, do that because you want me to react that way. No, no, no. I, I don't. I don't think I've ever lied about that. Like, I've, 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 I've come out and said on this podcast that, you know, I'm going to say something right before the recording starts, like right after pressing record, right before the recording starts, because you can't help yourself and you react while the record is happening. Dude, my favorite kind of opening is a cold opening. You know that. <laughs> right, right. So, so like, I don't, that's why I don't feel bad about it because I think, I think it helps the content. It just, Thank you, man. <laughs> it just makes you look a little goofy. <laughs> well, I mean, I wouldn't have it any other way, man. Come on. No, no. <laughs> what, you want me to actually take myself seriously and have our listeners actually take me seriously? Come on, man. <laughs> no. Was that a raspberry? Yeah, it was. That was that okay. must be going. That must be going. <laughs> you know, was, like when you take one of those like little electric plastic fans, it's like a handheld plastic fan to like cool you down. It sounded like you took one of those and like had it running against your arm. Oh, like, no. making the little flappy sound. <laughs> No, I do I do raspberries by tucking my under my my lower lip under my uh, above lip and then just kind of blowing through that. That's kind of hot. That's that's hot. That's hot. Oh, so it makes so it makes kind of like a sloppy sharp sound with the raspberry, not a not the dry, <laughs> not the dry annoying. Right, the the sloppy sharp sound. Welcome everybody to the imaginary boys. <laughs> this is the poopy con- <laughs> podcast. <laughs> You, we 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 talked about boobies. Yep. We yep. talked about boobies. We mm-hmm. even talked about booty. Now it's time mm. to talk about poop. <laughs> because everybody poops. It's something we can all share in common, right? Yeah. Do you, no. do you know do you know what today is? Do you know why why we're so excited, Mr. Lettuce? Do you know why this is such a good day? This is the day before the NFL draft. No one cares. Moving on. This is the 40th episode, man. This is our 40th episode. Yeah, you've tolerated my existence for 40 episodes. Dude, that's I like ah, oh, we're here, man. We're here. Yeah, like, no, this is this is a thing. Uh, yeah, people, we're on our way to 50 as well. Yeah, we'll we'll we're on our way to 50 and uh in about a month or so we'll be our 1 year anniversary. Oh, like, man. So cool. Did you think that we would have gone this far, like, back when we first started back in June? No, I figured your work would have disturbed would have disturbed this. Nah, f- bruh. <laughs> <laughs> like it was either it's either your work or mine. Mm-hmm. Like I, I my my fear when we started was my work was going to get silly. Mm-hmm. Right about as like like. About a month or two in, my work was going to get really silly, and we were going to about to miss a month. And yeah. at which point, we were like, "Why bother?" Yeah, yeah. Um, I totally but, understand that. Like, I get that. But no, like things stayed stayed the way they were, yeah. and I'm actually kind of incredibly grateful for that because this has been a this has been a fun part of my week, and it's a legacy I can leave. Uh, for uh the people who know me. Yeah. I I could be like, I know this guy. Uh, He did this thing here and this is kind of who he was. So. Mm -hmm. Well, a a thing too is like, um, like I have a very, um, it's hard for me to stay focused on content. Like I try really hard to kind of like try new things and, and feel it out. And, you know, and there's like a bunch of different kinds of content that I'm always experimenting with. And and uh, I even want to go back to one of them. And I've just been like, it's been tough because it's been kind of an editing nightmare. 
um, which is something I have to get over and get done. Um, but it's just been hard for me to stay dedicated to something because um, I am the single person that it relies on. So like when I'm making my normal content, whether it's streaming or videos or whatever, um, the only person that I can ever let down is myself. And, you know, what happens is sometimes I'm like putting things off, you know, and I I put things off and I have a hard time staying dedicated to them or those things don't feel the same when I first started working on them. So I like drop them after like a certain amount of time. But like the thing that makes this podcast so special to me is because I have a second driving force, which is you. You are the person who has constantly and and I'm grateful for it. Kept I reminded me in, you to record. Yeah, you've constantly kept me in check on on doing this podcast and not in a bad way, like it's never nagging or or anything like that. But overall, my brain basically says like now it's not just me that I have to worry about. Like I have to also, you know, uh, be there for my my good friend, Mr. Lettuce. And like we we want to do this together. And it's a fun project because we're both working together on it as like a team. And that's been one of the major driving forces that basically says over and over again, like I can't give it up. Like I can't stop doing this. And um, that's what I really enjoy about it is because like, I do genuinely enjoy doing these podcasts with you every single time we do them. Like I never want to give them up. And like, I understand like, for example, like last week we had to take a break because you were busy and the times didn't line up and that's okay. My but, like, we always passed away on Easter. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, man. Well, that, no, that's what happened. Okay. My, grand, my grandfather passed away Easter morning. Right. I'm sorry to hear that. That's, you know, that's rough, man. Um, it, it was. I mean, that's why I didn't feel like I'd be down for recording. So uh, that last week, last week yeah. was totally my call. Like I was that's like, okay. I was like, and I actually came to him. It was like, it was like Monday. It was like Monday morning. Um, And I was like, I was like, look. I'm going to be out all week. If we don't mm-hmm. record now, this is not going to happen this week. And, and you're like, okay, just take a week off. And I'm like, okay, sweet. Yeah. That's yeah. And, and I mean, that never bothers me because I know that like, no matter what we get stuck with or why we have to put our things off, we keep coming back to it. And like, I love that about this, you know, like, yeah, it's okay for us to take like, you know, a week off when we need to. And, and, but I like the fact that both of us, like every time when we come back to it, we're still fired up to do it, you know? So this, oh, yeah. is, this, this is just me being appreciative of this wonderful podcast. It is now at 40 episodes and like, yeah. like you said, almost a full year. Like that's so cool. <laughs> and speaking of that full year, mm-hmm. uh, I guess our top art, we can start getting into our topic of discussion. Um, Cause boobies? you know, you, you just bo- bo- boobies, bo- 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 boobies. I mean, maybe next week. <laughs> <laughs> What's our topic of discussion, Mr. Les? Bring it, bring it, bring it. I mean, I, I, mean, I love boobies just about as much as everybody else. <laughs> um, I just, I've got to, I've got to pace art myself. Uh-huh. On the objectification of women, because I uh, my fiance still gets weirded out hearing me talk about other women. <laughs> it's all right, man. I get it. It's all good. It's no, 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 no. It, we've it's done great. a lot of booby talk lately. I get it. I get we, it. We've done we've done some we've done some booby talk, uh, but that's because boobies are awesome. Yeah, they are. Uh, my lovely fiance has a great set. Sure, all boobies um, are greatly welcomed. Uh, I mean, I mean, I guess to make things simple, sure, I'll agree with that. Um, <laughs> preferably nice looking ones, preferably nice looking ones. I get it. I I know. I'll, I'll say it. If you don't want to say it, it's yeah. okay. I'll say it. I'll say it. It's fine. Oh yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> like there, there's there's somewhere I'm just like no. <laughs> but anyway, that's that's not our topic of discussion. This is this is not a uh, uh, this isn't gonna, uh, this isn't going to be a very tangent uh, happy episode, unfortunately. Uh, so okay. we're going to rain we're going to rain you in a little bit on that one. Okay. Uh, no, the topic of discussion was 
you claimed in like our third episode, which was the E3 episode. Yeah. Um, your game of the show for E3 was a very small, very little known, uh, independently developed game called Core Keeper. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, the 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 shining diamond of E3, Core Keeper, of course, the game that we yeah. are both very obsessed with. Yeah, yeah. Well, at the time, I was like Core Keeper. I'm like, uh, it's it's another one of those survival crafty games. Yeah. Um, and 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 I and I recall my time not being high on it because I was just like, I was like, if this is just going to be an, another Terraria Minecraft thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, like how much I'm for that. Right? And, and, yeah, and I remember you weren't super excited about it. Like, I was you were super, intrigued, but I, I wasn't super excited about it. And I was like, and I was the guy over there sucking the triple A cock, going, "Oh, give me that, give me that, uh, that Far Cry Six, oh, <laughs> oh just, just on my boobies and everything." Uh, nah, bruh. Uh, and, and the thing is, is like I was so excited for the DLC. I haven't touched that yet. Yeah, like I didn't spend the money on it, and I'm like uh, the the Far Cry Six. I played a little bit of Far Cry Six, and it just wasn't for me. Mm-hmm. You're slowly, you're slowly becoming a hipster like me, lettuce. You're turning your nose up at 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 fi- at uh, you know the the high quality large developer games and coming to the dark side of indie development games. Oh man! Join us in the hipster world, Mister Lettuce. <laughs> Lick me. <laughs> but no. Uh, so like. It, it came out and you're like, hey, this came out. I'm playing it. And then I was like, oh, OK, right on, right on. Mm-hmm. And you're like, it's on. It's an early access on Steam. I'm like, uh oh, <laughs> oh, just like just like uh, um, Alchemy Simulator. Remember that game? Yeah. Remember po- just potion like, Craft. Yeah. Like like just like Potion Craft. Just like Potion Craft, man. Come on. What's your problem? What's wrong? Uh, I mean, early potion- access, bro. Let's go. Uh, I, I, I think potion. I think I still think potion craft is overpressed. I, I like it, but um, I'm definitely not obsessively playing it. So you know, take that for what you will. Yeah, no, I, 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 I believe potion craft. I still, uh, I believe to my day to this day that potion craft is, is too expensive. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, um, core creeper. Core Keeper uh, is actually like a dollar more. Uh, well, I think that Potion Craft was like. I don't remember exactly, but it wasn't it was that 12. expensive. It was 12. Are you sure it, it was, was 12? I it was like it was six 12. or seven bucks. It was 12. Oh, hmm. I, I remember thinking like, like for what they were giving you for twelve dollars, I was like, no, this should be five. Mm-hmm. I was like, this, this should be five. And uh, for for as as little as there was actually implemented, mm-hmm. and for as kind of janky some of the mechanics were, yeah, you had to you had to frame frame rate limit the uh, one of the mini games to actually make it usable. Yeah, the the speech stuff that that mechanic was pretty yeah. terrible. Yeah, yeah, the fact that the fact that it was tied to your frames per second on machines that like, like could pull 200 frames per second was, was bad. And you had to limit it to 30 to just make that, make it playable. Yeah. Um, but core keeper is, I believe 13. Yeah. It's like 12 or 13 bucks. If I remember, it's like 12, it's like 12 99 or 13 or something like that. Early access, Uh, early, early access. Uh, surprisingly, uh, there's a lot of like little bit of content in that game. And I think it actually does justify its cost way more than potion craft did. Yeah. Uh, but I am not, uh, afraid to say my initial, my initial response to like the announcement and even like early, like early stuff that I saw about it. Yeah. Yeah. 
like when we were when back in in the E3 where they pre- first presented it, right? Well, even even like when you started playing it, I'm like, oh, whatever. Uh, I jumped in on it because it looked half interesting. Yeah, and I found myself incredibly hooked. Yeah, it's a ton of fun. It is like actually a ton of it's, fun. So, oh uh, my, my fear of it was. Okay, so this is like Minecraft. It's going to do that thing that Minecraft does where it has a game mechanic that it doesn't explain very well cuz they they think it had because they think it's kind of self-explanatory where there's a lot that's not. There was some uh, stuff like that like in the very beginning where it's In the very like, beginning at the, at the very beginning of Minecraft it was like figure it out. Yeah. Well, I mean cuz they rub, do that in, in these rub these two things in the 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 thing I don't like about, about the Minecraft thing mm-hmm. was the you had to figure out the patterns. Right. And well, I mean, not, like they have the like, recipe books and stuff like that. But I mean, um, oh, those those weren't always there. Well, not from the very beginning. I, I don't think yeah, the, the recipe, I mean. the recipe, the recipe books were not always there. Yeah. So you had to you had to figure that out on your own and uh, which which invariably meant that you had a wiki open on another screen somewhere. Mm hmm. Um, but. Uh, Core Keeper has a little bit of it, but what isn't like immediately like like going off on your head? They actually do a good job of like dropping hints in the in the um, tooltips. Right, right. Like for for everything for everything that isn't like self explanatory, like a tooltip is exists to be like to point you in that direction. Mm-hmm. And the gameplay loop uh, has a progression arc that the game doesn't necessarily spell out for you, Mm -hmm. but it's apparent enough to always kind of drag you in that direction. You're not you're not you're not necessarily stuck just kind of at your own whims where you randomly happen upon upon the gameplay like mm. the important parts of the gameplay, like Minecraft often does. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, like the game does a good job of putting you in the position to where you figure out what it is that you're supposed, like where it kind of figures out, figures it out where it's going to put you mm-hmm. and where, and where you're going to go with it. Um, I like in the, I, I, I've heard this game uh, called uh, th- like if Terraria and Stardew Valley uh, Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> right. I remember you were saying this earlier. Yeah, yeah. like that's what yeah. this game would be. And I'll go a step further. It's a Stardew Valley, Stardew Valley, and Terraria. Bruh. And their baby was a uh, dungeon crawling action RPG. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, I I think it's a blast. Like, because here's the thing: is because like I've um, I haven't been playing it as much as Lettuce, but when me and Lettuce are playing it, like. Like, for example, me and Lettuce had like a day where we played it all day nonstop. Like, no joke. We, we, he literally contacted me. He's like, hey, I'm getting on Core Keeper. I'm going to join your world. You get on as soon as you can. Let's go. And I was like, all right. And I was like, this will be like a fun couple of hours of gameplay. You know, this will, this will be a good time. Me and Lettuce, you know, playing we spent, Core Keeper. And we, for spent a almost, and we spent almost eight hours doing it. We spent we spent like the whole day, dude. Like we we got on around, I want to say like two two p.m. or three p.m. Yeah, and then we played nonstop until I want to say like ten or eleven p.m. Yeah, Courtney left about one o'clock. I went out and got myself a uh, matcha cream frappuccino. Yeah, and a grilled cheese sandwich from Starbucks. Mm, yummy. And then I came home and I'm like, I'm going to play some, I'm going to play some core keeper, man. Yeah. Uh, it's either, it's like, if you, do you want me to help? Like, do you want me to come over and help you out? Or do you want me or do you, or do, am I just going to sit here and play by myself? Well, the thing is, is because one of the, one of the things that core keeper was heavily advertising to make their gameplay look really good, which is what I was all on board with too is they were like, the best experience is played with multiple people. 
And I was like, that sounds awesome. So like when when Lettuce was like, hey, like I'm thinking about playing Core Keeper. Like, do you want me to come over? I was like, hell yeah. Like, let's let's get our world going together. Like, this will be great. And we played all day. <laughs> like we played all freaking day. Like I, yeah. I, I dropped everything I was doing that day just to play core keeper nonstop. And I was even planning to only play for a couple of hours originally. Yeah. And like, like, I don't think, I don't think either one of us was like, yeah, we'll do three or four. Like I figured I'd, I'd show you around a few things and I thought you might've been still missing. Yeah. Um, and I was like, okay, I'll spend about three or four hours just kind of showing him, where to go for this, where to go for this. Yeah. Um, and maybe we would uh, possibly think about tackling Grom together. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which we I tried still soloing, have not done yet, which I tried soloing. <laughs> I was like, I was like, Hey, I got, I got this. Yeah. And I, I think it's like, I think I have appropriate level. Let me see if I can't uh, solo him. No, no, I wasn't doing it. I wasn't doing nearly enough damage. Um, no, so we, we definitely got to do. We definitely got to. Uh, we definitely got to tackle the two bosses because uh, you're going to be at a point where you're going to want to be uh, in the uh, in, in the fourth uh, biome, get and getting that stuff. Yeah, because that's because that's the 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 post core awakening is where all the cool stuff happens. Well, uh, the, auto- yeah. the, autom- the automation, the drills for the uh, for the large or uh, or veins yeah 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 that all happens that all happens in scarlet and scarlet's only available in the fourth biome right and the fourth biome opens after you unlock the core right yeah so um well i mean we i i stumbled across like that that ring with that the thing that makes it so that you don't get slowed by slime and i think that's going to be like integral to defeating that that second boss a little Um, well, I mean, I, I have it's a, better. I, I don't think it's possible without it, to be honest. <laughs> like it is. It is. Okay. I've seen. The problem is, is what you have to do is you have to be willing to work quickly. You've got to, if you have two, and this helps if you have two people. Uh, once Grom, because it takes Grom approximately four minutes to uh, lap around, lap around the uh, the the map. Right. So he passes, you clear out, you clear out a, a, like a small uh, arena with some slime. Mm-hmm. And then what you do is you wait for him to kind of uh, like you wait in the middle of the arena and um, wait for him to show up. And then when he shows up, you, you run forward, drop some bombs. So you've got a trail of bombs that that he runs into and explodes and hopefully that's enough to piss him off enough to stop running. Does he actually stop running and try to fight you? Yeah. After okay. after you sap after you sap about half health, he's like, huh, I guess I'm gonna have to wreck these fools. And then it's just <laughs> and then it's just a matter of dot because what he'll do is he'll like run off screen, charge through the screen, run off screen, charge through the screen. Right. Uh it was basically what it is, is you just gotta bro- dot like you gotta uh, sprint out of the way and then, you know, either attack him with a melee weapon or hit him with whatever your strongest ranged weapon is. Sure, sure. The okay. other one, the other boss, the Hive Mother, uh, she's actually kind of easy. Yeah, we haven't seen anything of that that boss yet. Like, have you actually found her at all yet? I haven't found her, but I know how to find her. Okay. There's... uh. If you go to the statue for the slime boss, yeah, it'll track it for you. I, I remember yeah, you that. You could buy. Yeah. You could buy. You could buy her scanner, where it'll tell you where she is. Yeah. Now, she doesn't attack. She doesn't attack you until you attack her. She's got a room, and the room has spawning pits where mobs spawn. So the so the idea is clear out her room, expand her room, and then wall off the spawning pits so that the uh, ads don't bother you. Okay. And then it's just a matter. And then it's just a matter of planking the shit out of her. Okay. 
It's good. To she's know. Uh, like she's she's kind of easy to cheese. But that's that is the, uh, the but that's the but after that that's the final boss, and then you can open up the um the fourth biome and uh you know start getting your scarlet and start and for you who loves who loves base design <laughs> yeah I know and <laughs> and you no know, no no it's <laughs> it, like I mean I'll hand it to you mm-hmm. that's that. The the design is kind of limited, mm-hmm. but you still manage to work with it mm-hmm. and 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 design something that I think you would you would be you wouldn't hate showing other people. So yeah. th- good on you. <laughs> I'm a you know an adventurer and and you know forager and collector, right? So my my major complaint with the game is I don't have a big enough bag. Uh, after you beat uh, Grom, you get the ability to craft uh, recall idols, mm-hmm. which fixes the problem of running out of bag space. Because my problem with running out of bag space is, A, I have to stop doing what I'm doing, which is usually killing cavelings. Yeah, right. The little the little goblin dudes or whatever, right? The little goblin dudes are the big troll dude. Yeah, yeah, I've seen them. We uh, fought a bunch of them at one point. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah no, yeah. Well, the big, <laughs> you kind of like stood behind me while I'm like, blink, 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 blink. Uh, hey, shut up, man! I'm a brave boy. I'm a brave boy. I'm a <laughs> big boy adventurer. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, that was, but that's that was a lot of fun. Um. Your base, like I contributed, th- what I contributed was like, like I was like, hey, let's use these railroads and let's make sub bases out of these yeah, abandoned the, homes. The railway line um, and uh, the little mini bases are great. I was, I was planning to start building some like um, some food supplies in those mini bases so that you could just kind of hang out there because you were telling me that was an issue, like you would run out of food. And you wouldn't have access to it because the mini bases are kind of barren. Well, so well no. Was... What my problem is is, um, I like I eat food for the buffs. Oh right, right. So I'm like, my my problem is is like I don't have a big enough farm mm-hmm. to where I could to where I could get like a full stack of, um spicy pepper or hearty pepper wraps Mm -hmm. like i don't have enough pepper i don't i just don't have a big enough farm because at the size of my farm on my server or on my game uh i have like 20 like spaces for 20 peppers 20 uh berries and then 10 of each Mm -hmm. and it's become apparent to me that because my because my key contribution is cooking, I really, really, really want uh, probably a bigger farm. All right. So I mean, yeah. So I just so I have to like either on my game, well, on my game and possibly in your game, uh, like come up with a with a bigger farm plot so that I can so that I can make. Um, you know, a full stack of glow puddings and a full stack of uh, <clears throat> of uh, spicy uh, or hearty pepper wraps. Yeah. No, I mean, um, I, I get it. My my long, you know, my my blood, sweat and tears that I've shed into making a beautiful, wonderful basin uh, for us is, is it's just not good enough. And I, I get that. I, I understand. <laughs> yeah, okay. you need. You need a bigger farm, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, I need to uh, stop being a scrub and uh, just get better. Just, I just need to be better. <laughs> yeah, I was no, actually. So- I'll be honest. I was planning to build like a larger farm, anyways. So it all It's all good. Yeah, like uh, larger farm, larger mob farms, stuff like that. Um. Well, so the the thing with the the little mob farms that we have, the only reason why those aren't bigger 
is literally because um, I didn't have enough of the well, maybe for the slime stuff I do, but for the the little um, what is it called? The chrysalis or whatever, the little things that spawn the little wormy guys. Um, I didn't have enough of their floor panelings to be able to make a larger farm room for them. Yeah, so um, we need to we need to hop on. I need, to, or at least I need to hop on and clear out a couple of uh, uh, hive biomes. Yeah, yeah. Just you know, if you wanted to spend some like you know an hour or two just digging up the floor, like go for it, bro. Like actually, that would actually be really helpful. Things, <laughs> one of the one of the updates that they're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, they're actually making the shoveling a little bit better. Oh, okay. Like, That's cool. Like they're making it so that actual, the actual iron shovel, the shoveling damage works so that it tears up the floors a little bit faster. Okay. Cause well, right, I mean, now, cause the... right now, cause right now there's almost no purpose to making it uh, cause the, to wasting iron ore uh, bars on a shovel. Be because it doesn't tear because like at the minimum uh a floor it takes three wax to remove a floor mm -hmm. and a lot of complete people complained about that and they're like okay well if we if we tweet if we make the floors respond to floor damage like walls respond spawn the mining damage mm -hmm. uh, that might be something that helps and yeah i think that would be pretty good um well i think the the slime floors and the, the chrysalis floors, I think those are insta mine with a shovel. Like I'm pretty sure those like instantly come up the moment you touch them with the shovel. Chrysalis takes two. Are you sure? I thought they take like one. Cause like, they're not like actual floors. They're tiles on the floor. I've still had it take two from the pop-up. Hmm. Okay. W with the shovel. I mean, I'll, uh, I'll look it into it. Takes forever with a pickaxe, but. Um, I don't think you can dig them up with a pickaxe. I think I've gotten one up with a pickaxe before. Because oh. I know that like the 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 little spiky traps, the little the the chrysalis spiky traps, like those will come up with a pickaxe, and like the the floor veins will come up with a pickaxe. But I think that the chrysalis stuff, like you can only dig those up with the shovel, and I think those are insta mined. Like I recall that, but I might be misremembering. Um, I was actually thinking yeah. about maybe playing it tonight a little bit once we uh, <laughs> finish the podcast, maybe. But ah, oh, maybe I might be down. Well, it's because um, I haven't been playing it for the last couple of days, and I know that you've still been working on it. And I was like, well, I should probably get on because I've been doing other stuff these last couple of days. So, oh no, like I haven't done anything since uh, since Sunday. Oh, so you've just been playing in your own base then, like in your own world? I mean. Oh, yeah, I can't hop onto your world without you being online. Oh, I did not know that. I didn't know that that was a, a limitation that they uh, yeah. require. Yeah, there there's not dedicated servers yet. Right. OK, so, that's so interesting. I, I didn't so, know that. So I can't access your game until you're and until you're up. Got it. I legit did not know that. I just assumed that you would just like log on whenever you felt like it. But. Okay. No, Good to know. no, Good to know. no. The uh, that that's actually one of the reasons why uh, they're they on the uh, experimental uh, mm -hmm. uh, fork of the game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they have dedicated servers up now. Oh, they're, they're asking they're asking people to test it. Um, like public servers for people to to test out. Well, yeah, like like you would like you could like run a server on your, uh, on your computer. Like, uh, I think they, I think they do have public servers. I also think their hope is at one point to allow people to private host. Right. Right. They basically and, want to like do the Minecraft thing is what's going on. That's absolutely. What they and, uh, I don't blame them. That's a good model to go after. No, that's a good model. And actually I, uh, put a, uh, note out on your, um, discord. Uh, oh yeah, to so get people to join, I saw that. Yeah, I was like, "Hey, people, <laughs> you guys, yeah, you guys should definitely, you guys should definitely get this thing because yeah. uh, we'll be playing together." Yeah, it's it's definitely like it's it's a super fun game. Like my problem, the only reason why I haven't been uh, playing it as much the last couple of days is because what I learned from our all day session that we did together 
was um, that when I start playing it, because like the thing is, is like, I don't know if you know this or you probably didn't, but when you got off that night, I pl- I kept playing for like another two or three hours. Oh, <laughs> no, no. I feel it. No, I feel yeah. it too. Like the only reason why I stopped playing was because I knew I had to be at work in the morning. Yeah. I, I kept playing. Like when you got off, I was like, well, there's a couple of other things I still want to do. So I guess I'll just yeah. kind of keep oh, playing oh. a little bit. Oh, with the. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. No, with you being as design centric as like base design centric as you are. Like, I can see where you're like, I'm going to do this. Oh, now that I've got this, I should probably do this. Oh, I've got this. Now I should probably do this. No, I can see. I can see where you'd be like, one more turn. Yeah. (laughs) Like, like I used to be with um, Civilization. Mm -hmm. Just one more turn. And then five hours later, one more turn. Yeah. It's like, that's the thing about that kind of stuff. Like, I I love, uh, I don't know, because I do that with Minecraft, too, where like, I, you know, I'm working on a project and I was like, yeah, I'll go to bed at like, you know, I'll go to bed at like midnight. It's not a big deal. And then I look at the clock and it's like, you know, five in the morning. And I'm like, what am I doing with my life? (laughs) Like, why? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So, I mean, and and Core Keeper definitely gives me that vibe too. like when I've been playing it, where it's like if I get on this game, like to hell with anything else I'm doing for the rest of the day. Like it's yeah, gone. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I, I was, I'm, I've been there too. Like I've actually, I've actually likened the game a lot to uh, animal crossing. Yeah. You've been making that comparison a few times because, because um, like Minecraft gets a lot of flack for being a casual game for, you yeah. know, a casual game for kitties. Yeah. There's not a lot that's casual about M- Minecraft. Outside of outside of like creator mode. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is, is like what I always love to say is, is real Minecrafters know that Minecraft is a horror game. Like, right. Like, there's nothing like there's nothing like, <laughs> Minecraft, Minecraft outside of like casual, like outside of creators mode. Yeah. Where you've instantly got where, where you have like the ability to fly right out of the bat. And yeah, just, you just kind of just use it as a logo set. Yep. Yeah. Actual actual Minecraft isn't 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 actually all that ca- casual. Yeah, it's difficult. Yeah. Like, I mean, when you when you're playing in survival mode of uh, of Minecraft and you want to do like a big spectacular build, like you got to be on that shit. Like that's literally like you're like you know if you're not building a dirt hut and you want to build a goddamn like you know castle. Like you're yeah, you're dedicating yeah. like a month of your life to that, <laughs> like you know. Yeah. So yeah. And so, I mean, there are aspects of Core Keeper that feel exactly like that too. Like we spent a whole day playing that game, and we got a lot done. Like, but there's still so much more that we still have to do on there. Like, yeah, it's but wild. The problem is the pro- But the thing is, is like Core Keeper doesn't. But Core Keeper, like, even though it has like the in depth stuff mm-hmm. that like the actual in depth people will enjoy. It goes about it in a super kind of chill and casual way. Well, you feel like you're making progress all the time, right? Uh, yeah. Like every like like every time you knock down a wall, you're like, okay, that's progress. Yeah, yeah. Like like any time that you collect a, a, a like every little bit of resources you collect is resource like feels like it's uh it feels like it's progress towards something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whereas you don't necessarily get that feeling with Minecraft. Like mm-hmm. in a way you in a way you kind of do. But well, I mean, I I know I understand the angle you're coming from because like, you know, like Minecraft is block by block, you know, and sometimes you yeah. need like 8 or 9 blocks to build a wall, right? Right. But in Core Keeper, a wall is a wall. So like when a wall comes yeah. down, that wall is gone, and when a wall goes up, that wall is finished. It's yeah. not like I have to do this like seven or eight times in a row to get one wall or to knock down one wall. Like, and I get that. Like, I totally get that. It's got a different um, level of progression that makes you feel like that you're doing more, much more quickly, but you still have that concept of like, this is a project that dedicate where I dedicate my time. 
so right. that you have something you're constantly doing, but at least you're aware of the progress as it's happening, you know? Building a farm, like sometimes building a farm in Minecraft feels like a th- like a step of a thousand needles, whereas mm-hmm. building, a, building a farm in Terraria is like... You mean... Right, um, you have, I mean, core keeper. Yeah, a core keeper. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, do you have a hoe? Yeah. Do you have seeds? Yeah, I do. Okay, great. You have a farm. Yep. Yep. Don't forget, don't forget to water your plants. Yeah, I know. That's difficult. <laughs> Dude, that, that ancient well thing is a lifesaver. <laughs> oh, I saw somebody design like a, uh, their farm. Yeah. To where it was Are like you- three... Are you going on YouTube and looking up like like videos like, of people playing see, these I'm, games? I'm just, I'm just, yeah. You are really into Core Keeper. <laughs> yeah, I was, like, I was like, what are other people like? Like, what is? Well, first of all, I was, I was like researching is like what is actual the like like what is like the end game progression? And I'm like, oh, that entire fourth biome is the end game. Yeah, I'm like, is the is the end game right now? I'm like, oh. Oh man! So we actually have to do the boss fights. Yep. Ugh. Yep. Like That's the boss thing. fights. The boss fights. Uh, like the boss boss fights are interesting. They're also like my least favorite part aspect of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, because you're building, you have to build everything up to it. You know. Yeah. Like you have to that's, really that's dedicate they, yourself to getting it done, and you have to get it done if you want to make the next level of like you know progression. Yeah, well, that's where the but but that's also where the action RPG comes in because you're like because you you know you you swing your sword at at Gulch uh, at a uh, at Gurch and you're like oh I'm not doing shit for damage yeah, yeah. back to the grind yeah like that's that's much. like that's the reason why I, I the bosses are my least favorite thing because it reminds you you are grinding yeah. Man, like I, I melee combat, like the melee combat tree hates my guts. I was like grinding on so many things for so long and I have made little to no progression on my melee skills. Like it drives me insane. I haven't uh, seen any confirmation of that, but I do believe uh, there's diminished, like after a certain turn, after a certain while, Mm -hmm. I believe there's diminishing returns. Mm hmm. Like if you're if you're at a point where your equipment is one shotting slimes, where you have I mean you have an iron sword now, so if the orange slimes are being one shot, I've been using the little uh, the the ancient broken handle. That's been my favorite oh, weapon lately. By the way, by the way, hold on to that. Yeah, there's there's a secret to that. I assume that you can like fix it. Yeah, to like be a, a full blown sword. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a uh, post game, uh, uh, crafting recipe, right? That makes part, sense. or at least or at least part of one where it builds you the strongest sword in the game. Oh, that's cool! It's a really like even just as like a broken weapon, it's incredibly powerful. I just got to say that. I'm hoping. Like, just, I'm, I'm hoping I didn't screw myself by throwing mine out. There's like two or three of them in my storage unit. Okay, I might grab yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, there's there's the there's the handle there's the blade there's a gem then it takes like 50 iron and something and something else yeah. and like 50 iron and like like 15 ancient gemstones which you probably have like a thousand of them now yeah we have so many of those goddamn gemstones we don't have a purpose uh, for them yet yeah you do every um, everything everything you everything you craft at the uh at the effigies Mm. are mechanical parts and gemstones. Oh yeah, that's how I built the slime sword. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. So so when we finally so when we finally beat uh uh Grom is or, or I think that's the one that gives you the ability to craft recall idols. Mm-hmm. We we won't we won't have a problem with uh with with no use for those at all. Oh and the NPCs uh, get more stuff as you beat more bosses. Oh, okay. Dude, that NPC pissed me off. I got really mad at him. <laughs> he escaped his little room, and then he was wandering around the base like the little the little merchant guy. He escaped his room when I went to visit him, and because mm-hmm. he kept like shoving himself into the doorway, and I had to get into that room, and he was just like, "Sweet, I'm free!" And like he sp- he like sprinted out of his little room that I was keeping him in. 
And he was wandering around the base and I was like, fine, screw it. You can stay in here if you want, right? And so <laughs> I let him run around in the base and what he kept on doing that made me so f***ing angry was while I was gardening, he would stand on the plots of land where I was gardening. So like, I, like you can't like pl- like garden in a space that is being occupied by like an NPC or an enemy. So yeah. like I'm f***ing trying to garden and this asshole is like standing right in front of me. Like he's like, what's up? What are you doing? What are you doing? Hey. Hey, I'm right here. What are you doing? I'm going to go this way. Oh, wait, I'm going to go back this way. Oh, like I was standing in front of you. I'm just going to stand here for like a minute and you can't do anything. Sucks, doesn't it? So I got super angry at him. So I started whacking him with my weapon, which he doesn't care about, apparently. (laughs) And he can take infinite damage without dying. And also he doesn't get angry when you whack him in the face like a billion times. Um, So I just got... Yeah, yeah. He uh, he doesn't care about that. He does like he's not angry at you for whacking him, and he can literally found, take infinite damage. I found the second NPC in the wild. Oh, he's well. I assume that he's probably being held up by a boss or something, because that's how you find no. the first one, right? No, he's he's trapped in a room with no hmm. exits. Oh, okay. Um. So I, I came across him, but uh, his. Uh, his range weapon, the flintlock um, musket. Oh, that's cool. And then, uh, so I have access to him, but I also make sure he st- he stays in that room because uh, he's in a walled area mm. surrounded by a moat. Well, I bridged <laughs> the moat to talk to him, and then I destroy the bridge on my way out. Oh, just like, to prevent him from escaping? It's like, you stay where you are, Mr. Man. They're kind of dicks. Like, they're kind of like assholes. <laughs> like, especially, like, don't ever, like, let them near a garden. Don't don't ever let them, like, in front of, like, have access to a garden. Just don't do it. It'll drive you insane. The um, boss, sum- you know, boss summoning idol I created? Um, yeah, the, the, the skull thing, right? The crystal skull or whatever? Yeah. That summons, like, a boss monster or something like yeah. that? In my game, I found his summoning, I found his summoning rune. Nice. Did you actually summon him and fight him? No, because I don't. I don't have ten shards yet. Oh, I see. I see. I only we'll have, have like. I only that. have like eight. Okay, but after. By the way, I just wanted to finish off with the that annoying NPC. Eventually, he got close enough to like one of the exits of the main base, and like he was just like doing that thing again, where he was just like like lodging himself in like into the doorway. And I was like, I swear to because he was like right next to my garden because there's like a garden exit. And I was like, I would rather let you roam free <laughs> outside of the base instead of trampling my goddamn plants. So I just let him out. I just let him run free. So now he's just out there <laughs> in the wild right outside of the base. He'll return to his room eventually. I hope so. Like, I actually like I, I tried to like go to different areas and then come back to see if he would go back in. He wouldn't. And then, like, I tried logging off of the game and then logging back on. He still wouldn't go back to his goddamn room. So I was like, fine, you can be feral out in the goddamn wilderness on your own. I don't give a shit. You don't even sell me anything good. You're just an asshole. You're just a goddamn asshole. (laughs) He eventually sells golden larva meat. Larva meat would be nice to have. Gold, I don't really care super much about. Golden. Golden larva meat, the rare version. Oh, I didn't know that was a thing. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Every recipe, every re- ev- uh, every vegetable, and some of the uh, different food items have a rare version. Oh, okay. I did not know that. Like you have mushrooms and big mushrooms. Oh wait, yeah. You you brought some of those back at one point and cooked them up or something into a special yeah. item, right? Yeah. 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 Actually, if you didn't use it, there's uh something that was cooked up. With golden larva meat and a uh, and a big mushroom, and I think I just left it in your cooked food bin so that you could try it. No, oh, I didn't remember that, but I will look into it. I will look into it because I probably didn't touch it. I pretty much just eat like the the pepper wraps uh, with the the heart fruit, the heart peppers, heart peppers. That's wraps. a that's a really good. Uh, I found that that's a pretty good like. That's like the best food in my opinion. Well, just. Well, I mean, it's the best food based on just eating for the sake of eating. 
like because they're easy to make they the 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 seeds that come off of those like the peppers and the the heart fruits are really easy to acquire um right so those are both, like my go-to because they're because they're both uh dirt biome fruit uh vegetables yeah and i always feel like the flowers are always uh juking me on the seeds like the flowers are are always like i mean i actually get like i have the the maxed out seed perk so i mean all plants should probably give me like a really good chance like whenever i harvest like a pepper or a heart fruit i always get a seed from them all the time now um but the only the, thing the, the only thing that doesn't always give me seeds when I harvest them is the uh plant that gives you fiber. Oh, that's that, interesting. That's that is the only thing that jukes me on a seed at this point. Yeah. Every, the flowers else, are the ones that always juke me all the time. Everything else everything else gives me a 50 everything else gives me uh 100% seeds. Oh, I see. Yeah, them damn plants. Them damn shifty ass plants always juking, juking on the seeds. But yeah, the 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 berries and the the peppers pretty much always give me seeds. Like I always get exactly the amount that I harvest, and that's really good. Um, so those are the most common food item. And I don't like to take like lots and lots of different kinds of foods unless I'm planning to utilize them for specific buffs. Like I know that you like to have like a large variety of foods for all sorts of buffs. Me, not so much unless I really, really need them for something specific. But. I mean, I've probably been shooting myself in the foot because of that, because I end up keeping um, more food on me than or at least I'm uh, eating more storage slots than I probably yeah. should be. My, my, but again, my problem is, is that I can't Ooh. make enough um, uh hearty pepper wraps and glow puddings mm -hmm. to, to not carry other different types of stuff. I have now officially finished my long Island iced tea, which I made in celebration for this episode. You're drunk, Mr. Idea. Hat. What? I said you're drunk, Mr. Hat. <laughs> um, I don't think I explained that at the beginning of the episode. I learned how to make a Long Island iced tea today um, because I happen to have all the ingredients except for one. <laughs> um, I had all the ingredients for making a Long Island iced tea and I was like, I want to make that. Um, so I made myself a Long Island iced tea um, to celebrate the 40th episode, 190 subscriber uh, episode of... Um, the imaginary boys. And, um, it was very good. It was definitely a long Island iced tea and it I didn't have it. any, it didn't have any goddamn ice in it. Like I literally had everything except for ice. How sad is that? Yeah. <laughs> Wait until you become like me. Mm -hmm. Cause today I am drinking a, it's a day that ends in Y crown and Coke. Very nice. Using Very using nice. my using my peach crown royal, and the the thing tastes like a peach gummy ring, mm. which we which we have uh, canonically declared as the official candy stuffs of the Imaginary Boys podcast. Yeah, peach candy rings are freaking delicious. Like I love them. <laughs> they are very good. Watch, like you're gonna get famous because of this yeah. at one point, and all your fans are just gonna like send you. Uh, peach candy ring candy in your P.O. box. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I don't I don't advertise it that often, but I probably should. Um, P.O. box is down in the description below. Feel free to send boxes full of peach candy rings to the P.O. box down in the description below. Uh, I mean, I've said I've said to you, I've basically said you everything but that. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I got to OK, I got to make a confession to you, Mr. Lettuce. I got to make a confession here. I have eaten almost all of the Kit Kat bars. Okay. They're they are pretty much all gone. <laughs> I mean, I mean, put I mean, push coming to the shove. That was only like fifty mini Kit Kit Kat bars. Yeah, uh, I was a bad I'm boy. Kind of, I'm kind of sad that you didn't make content. Um. Well, I'm saving. I okay. I have two 
Kit Kat bars that I refuse to eat unless I'm on camera eating them because they are so absolutely weird that I refuse to eat them without having a camera on. Rum raisin so, and wasabi? I didn't get a rum raisin one or a wasabi one. Was that supposed to be something that was in the collection? Yeah. I thought I one of them had wasabi. That's why I got the second collection for you. Nah, none of them were wasabi or rum raisin. None of them. You, the also, ones- you also didn't get the bag of strawberry ones either. Yeah, I still have not received those. Um, Meh, whatever. But uh, I saved the uh, the uh, <laughs> the uh, what is it? The J- Japanese boy band flavored Kit Kat. Do you remember that one? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to figure out what that flavor is actually supposed to be. I don't know. It's just got like a picture of like a Japanese uh, pop boy band face like a, on like it. A, like a male J-pop star. Yeah, yeah. And, and like, I was like, I have to eat this on camera. Like, there's no way that I'm going to yeah, like. It's, it's weird. It's so weird. It's like, and so I keep calling it J-pop flavored um, Kit Kat bar. Um, but I'm saving that one to do for a video. And the other one that I saved is the um, the Mont Blanc alcohol uh, Kit Kat bar, which is out of all the Kit Kat bars, the only one that has like an alcohol warning on it because it's actually made with alcohol. So I can't find them anymore, but I was going to buy you a box of the uh, sake ones. Oh, that sounds so good. Like I saw them. I saw them and I can't find them again. So sorry. But that's OK. Um, But like the majority of them were very delicious. None of them like other than the two that I told you that I'm saving. Like I'm literally saving those two because they're so absolutely Bruh. strange that I have to like do it on camera. But the rest of them were delicious like nothing really stood out as weird or strange to me um there were some that were just regular kit kat bars that i didn't think were regular kit kat bars it was kind of weird um like they didn't have any like so any of the any of the kit kat bars that had um a picture of a coffee cup or said coffee break on them were just regular kit kat bars um there were also some Kit Kat bars that had like a picture of like a wheat, like a wheat grain on it. And those were also regular Kit Kat bars. They were just right. like regular chocolate ones. Um, let's see. And did, you notice, then, did, you, did you notice that the Japanese wafer was toasted a little differently? It didn't taste different to me. Um, actually, no. You know what? I think one of them was crispier than normal. I recall much- one of them. On the matcha for me at the very, because I bought like three bags of the matcha. Uh huh. And the wafer looked a little darker, like it was toasted a little darker and it was way crispier. Interesting. Maybe that's the ones that I, because there was definitely one that I had that like when I crunched into it, I was like, oh, this is crunchier. Like it's, it's, it's got a louder snap to it and like yeah. the texture is a little different. Uh, um, the, but yeah, I, I've noticed like the ones for the coffee break. I think the the idea was kind of like doing a uh, because one of the things like I don't know if you're familiar with the Australian candy Tim Tam. No, I don't know those. Which is kind of like a long Kit Kat. Okay, uh, that sounds uh, really well, good. I love what, Kit Kats. Well, there's something that like Australians do with their Tim Tams is they bite off each end of the Tim Tam, mm-hmm. and they'll like. Like if they have they like suck co- coffee through it. Yeah, that's co- so yeah. rad. <laughs> that might be that might be what the coffee break thing is. It's like Japanese people use Kit Kats as uh, Tim Tams. So one thing that I've heard before, I don't know if this was a Japanese thing, but I did hear that this was something that uh, that some people did was um, they would use Kit Kat bars to stir coffee like to stir their coffee. And the idea was that the chocolate would like melt off of the cookie and mix in with the coffee while they're stirring it. And then the cookie that's left over would soak up the coffee. And then they would just eat like a, like a coffee soaked, like Kit Kat biscuit pretty much. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah, no, I've heard about that. It's something that I 
probably should have tried, but I didn't think of it until just now. I mean, I've seen it, I've heard of it before, but I forgot and didn't bother to try doing that with any of my Kit Kat bars because I'm just a goddamn candy and chocolate fiend who's got to shove them in his mouth. <laughs> I'll 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 be I I'll admit though I didn't like I wasn't a fatty fat cakes about it and like ate all of them in one go like I was um sparsing them out over multiple days and stuff like that. Um Yeah. Some of them that I was a little sad about was there were some really cool ones that I thought would be really good and uh they ended up like either not as good as I thought they would taste or they were like broken into pieces. Oh. Like they were just like ruined. Yeah. So like there were melon Kit Kat bars and they tasted really good, but both there were two of them and both of them were like shattered to pieces when I opened them. It made me really sad. Um, and uh, the there were orange ones, too, that actually were really delicious. And they were like, um, you, have you ever had those like the the chocolate oranges that come in the box and then you unwrap them things. and you split them and they're like instantly like chocolate slices, like chocolate orange slices. No, I love those things. Yeah, they're so good. So the orange chocolate Kit Kat bars tasted exactly like those, like exactly like them. I like, would buy, I would buy a whole box of those, of those orange chocolate Kit Kats. Oh, they're really good. Um, I remember those very distinctly because of how tasty they were. Um, and they also had like the regular matcha Kit Kat bars, but I also noticed that they had dark matcha Kit Kat bars too, which yeah, were like, yeah. they were more pasty and grainy, but they also had like a stronger matcha flavor, which made them really tasty. So, yeah, yeah, they were all, those were a lot of fun to go. And the cheesecake ones, dude, those were so good. Holy shit, the cheesecake Kit Kat bars were amazing. Oh my god. Those were like I'm actually really happy that you bought me a whole goddamn bag of those cuz Jesus Christ those were amazing. <laughs> like, I, think, I I knew I knew they would be your like your jam. Oh, they were so good. Cuz they actually was, taste like cheesecake. And I was feeling a little extra guilty for almost killing you with baked soda. <laughs> Hands down, the worst of all the sodas. Hands down. Um, I know we already talked about it, but I was really surprised that the Buffalo was not the worst one. It was re- very weird. It was a very weird drink. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, man, I, I really appreciate all the Kit Kats. And I promise that I will do a video on those two really weird ones. Like, I was just like, these are too weird to like not like do a video on. So I have to hold on to them. So. Uh, maybe I'll try and do the video this week. Maybe I'll try and do that because I've been kind of behind on uh, video content creation lately. Yeah, whatever floats your boat. Yeah, man. It's just well, it's just those two specifically. I was like, I have to eat these on camera. There's no way. Like, are you kidding me? Like J-pop boy band flavored Kit Kat bar. Of course, I'm going to eat that on camera. <laughs> like, I have to. <laughs> I just hope I- that it's not like underwhelming, you know? They taste like sweaty balls. <laughs> like, it would actually be really funny if, like, they tasted salty and they had, like, and then, like, I'm, like, eating it and I'm, like, oh, oh, there's a hair in my mouth. What the hell? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, a hair that just comes right off of one of, like, the J-pop, like, band members or something. <laughs> It's like baked into a goddamn Kit Kat bar. I mean, Japanese people are weird, so. <laughs> oh my god, that'd be so amazing. <laughs> mm. Japanese, but I do have to say, um, and this was actually something that I noticed when I was eating the regular Kit Kat bars. Uh, they were the Japanese ones. The Japanese Kit Kat chocolate tastes different than American Kit Kat chocolate. Like they actually, it actually tastes different to me. It tastes, um, creamier, like creamier and milkier. Yeah. I noticed that too. Yeah. So that was really nice. I like that. So hell yeah. Japanese like Kit Kat, like I just love Kit Kat bars in general. Like there's something about the classic, like chocolate covered 
wafer cookie that is just so it's just like such a, a good candy formula, you know? And um, and then the Japanese like went ahead and took that and like perfected it. <laughs> like way to go, Kit Kat Bar. I'm proud of you, buddy. I'm proud of you. Anything you could do, I could do better. <laughs> I can do anything better than you. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. <laughs> uh, but I so do, yeah, no, I, I have to give you your props. Uh, mm-hmm. You you correctly called the best game at E3. Yeah. At the final E3 ever. Yeah, hell yeah. The final I- E3 ever. Uh, you called the best game. And it wasn't, and it wasn't like what everybody else thought the game of the show was going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, so kudos to you. Yeah, I mean, your opinions are still shit. Nope. Um, <laughs> but uh, you, I mean, <laughs> a, a, the a broken clock is right at least twice a day. That's okay. I am uh, am proud of my uh, my amazing hipster tastes in music as well as video games as well as film and uh i'm proud to say that uh i am a powerful and independent hipster that uh need no uh conformist or conformity and uh i I am a powerful powerful individual that will always go against the trends so um, that is my victory speech And I'd like to thank absolutely nobody except myself for my wonderful hipster mentality and tastes. And I absolutely deserve all the credit. So you're welcome. Yes, we're all different. I'm not. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. It's when when I saw that E3 core keeper just really stood out to me. I remember that very well. And, um, and I'm glad that it delivered. I really am. Um, and, and also, Oh, go ahead. And, and the thing is, is like, not only did it deliver, but like, there is some pretty apparent like potential there that I think is obtainable. Yeah. So if the devs just don't like Bruh. off in six months, right. I think I think they I think they they'll have a full game on their hands mm-hmm. that you know as long as they're doing like updates once a month mm-hmm. I think keep I think they'll keep their fans in. Um, one of the things I've noticed in, the, in a couple of the communities because you know I'm I'm hooked so I check it out and so I I've kind of jumped in to see what's what's going on. Yeah, I'm um, actually like impressed with how dedicated you've become to this game. Like, I'm actually like impressed by it. I'm a little. Like, I never thought you would out. go. I I never thought that you would get so deep into Core Keeper. Like, I'm I'm glad that you are because it's a good game. But uh, I'm surprised. <laughs> so I was like looking into it, and actually, a lot of the um, a lot of the community has already hit the uh, well. What do we do now? Stage. Sure. Sure. So they're so they're like like beating the, the beating the table for more content, mm-hmm. and I'm like I'm like oh that's not a good sign for this community. Yeah, yeah. If like a month in, people but they're still in early development, so I mean there's plenty of time for them to work shit out, you know. Uh, oh no, the, I mean there is, but the problem is is like they have to be very very conscious about pacing it, right? Because this community. Seems like it's the it's because they've already dropped like 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 a lot of people in the community said yeah I've stopped playing, and that's not a very uncommon sentiment. So what they what what has been kind of demonstrated is the developers are kind of beholden to a you know content release schedule uh, that they kind of have to hit. Right. Yeah. Uh, and like if they don't. If they're not able to hit that and the developers are like, well, we're screwed anyway. So they kind of just Bruh. off. off. Uh, that's going to lead to a lot of um, unrealized potential in the game. And that would be really sad. This is this is one of those games that actually aims to be mind ki- Minecraft mm-hmm. that has that has a good enough co-op that has a good enough co-op angle, especially a- I think especially after the dedicated servers hit. Mm-hmm. Um, 
that has a good enough co-op angle to actually kind of match Minecraft. Right. On, right. on the on the co-op thing. Because Minecraft's co-op is just, hey, you guys exist in the same map. Have fun. Mm-hmm. Unless you're really, really like coordinating. Yeah. I was about no to say com- because I, that no kind of comes off on the players. That kind of comes off yeah. on the players unless, because like um, unless you're coordinating, there is no common goal in Minecraft. Yeah. In in uh in Core Keeper, like a boss. Yeah. Yeah. Like, hey, do you need to drop from this boss? Yeah, resummon this boss, fight this boss. Right. I mean, it's kind of the it's it's actually kind of the um the raid mentality from um uh, World World of Warcraft. Mhm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. But but I I think that's well, I, hey, it's more than Minecraft will ever have. Um and th- I think that's strong enough of a multiplayer thing to kind of keep to to keep the community together. Right. Like right. if monthly if if monthly events or if monthly content drops is like here's this month's boss. Um yes, it's the same it's it's it's, it's kind of like this other boss but we tweaked it in a way uh to where it's kind of different and new. Mhm. Like you think they might like start having like uh like, you know, monthly scheduled dungeons and stuff like that. Where it's yeah. like a limited time thing, but you also need like multiple people to be able to take it down and stuff like that. And it'll probably have like rare drops that are like unique or something to that uh, that yeah. boss monster or something like that. Yeah, that, the the concept of the core, because the core is what's supposed to take you back to your world. If you've if you've paid attention to if, if you actually like read the story. Instead of uh, like the, the beginning, the intro story. Yeah. If you read it instead of like 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 spamming through it, yeah, I went through it on the first stream. So I mean, I get that. Yeah, yeah. So if you're there, it's like the the core is what what uh is kind of like you're 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 kind of beholden to it to get it to get out. Yeah. And after you wake it, it's like yeah, do this for me, and we'll let you go. Mm-hmm. I could see the core being like, hey. I know how I know like you're you're really useful and I'll I'd let you go and I really would would like to let you go, but we got this other thing we needed to do. We're gonna warp you into this instance dungeon. Yeah. But I, I think that like for that for co-op, just having because it's kind of like a an instance dungeon to 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 hit because the way maps are procedure like the way the, the world maps procedurally generated and it's supposed to be infinite. Mm-hmm. It's going to be hard to just kind of stick dungeons in, right? Right. But you could use the core. But you could use the core mechanic as kind of like an instance creator. Mm-hmm. Well, like and building I, mini maps that are temporary, basically. Yeah. Yeah. That would be interesting. I mean, and they already kind of like proved themselves in the sense of like. I mean, mind you, it's it's not something as intense of what you're talking about, but they did the whole like, you know, Easter egg thing. Right. And that proves that even though that's small and, you know, it's not the same kind of thing as like what you're talking about, it does prove that they want to put in an effort to do like special events for everybody to partake in that are temporary and give like unique items and things like that. So, you know, I, I think that uh, it's definitely possible that uh, they could do something like that in the future. You know, at least they're not leaving people high and dry so far. Yeah. Yeah. And even and even as part of like major content updates, um, you have one biome that you unlock with the core and then three different. Uh, you've seen the world. You've seen the edge of the world, right? The 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 unbreakable wall. Yeah, yeah, I've been there. Behind I mean, one I, of them, I, I discovered it and had you come over to me to check it out and tell me what it was. You know. Yeah, yeah. So behind one of them is uh is the um is the next biome. Three of them don't unlock anything yet. That is supposed to be like like the next um 
Like that is supposed to be like a court, like the, for the next year in the roadmap, like the large quarterly update or like new biome, right. new material range, uh, you know, harder enemies, um, more content. Right. I think, I think for like the first year, that is where that is where the the content updates are going to be going. Okay. Or, or, or I mean, the major content updates. Yeah. But I mean, after year after year one, if they're still going, they're kind of they're they're kind of uh there's there's like there's weird there's they're they're kind of like pigeonholed. Either they have to like be like like tell everybody, yeah, we're gonna have to reset your maps. Cause mm. cause cause the way the maps are typically set out now, yeah. They're they're the first biome, the dirt biome is the center of the map. Right. Uh hemis like one hemisphere and the, the two hemispheres surrounding the the center of the map are biomes two and three. And the way that they're procedurally generated is where is the Sent like like where are, where do they intersect? Right. Like at what at what at what radius at what radius is that that line of demarcation drawn? Mm-hmm. And then the the four far biomes are in the cardinal. Like if you because you said you noticed they kind of like the walls kind of curve out. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a it's like a dome shape or a circular shape. Yeah, it's it's got a circular shape away from the rest of the map. Yes. Yeah. There there's one there there's four of them, one in each cardinal direction. Mm-hmm. So well, that's, I remember because like you were trying to you you weren't sure and you were like oh I think that might be the map border and I remember saying like I don't think that that's the map border because if it was the map border it wouldn't be you know circular in that shape away from the center. You know, so, yeah, so no, yeah. it, it, it is effectively a map border. Um, it's just but it's locking you from the other side because yeah, there's more like, stuff on the other side. Well, there's there's stuff that they haven't designed yet. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, like like no, so I have high hopes for the game. Yeah, and because the game feels a lot to me like mine, like uh, like Animal Crossing. Mm-hmm. Like I've been super into it. Um. And I'm about to be incredibly annoying to your Discord. <laughs> it's okay, man. Like, come on, guys, <laughs> buy this game. <laughs> it's you it's wanna... really good. Like, I mean, I would definitely recommend it to all the listeners what, that are. What do you that are what do you do? Podcast. What are you losers doing? Playing Hello Kitty Island Adventure? Yeah, man. Don't hate on Hello Kitty Island Adventure. What do you don't don't do? Don't be that guy. Come on, I'm man. That guy. I'm, no. I'm that guy. No, Hello Kitty Island Adventure is a masterpiece. And if you're not playing that, then you're missing out, man. Hello I mean, Kitty Island Adventure is pong in comparison to Core Keeper. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's I even re- I actually recall. I think I remember what that game actually looks like too, because it's a real game, right? It's not just a meme. It's a real game, if I remember correctly, right? Mm, I don't I'm, think it actually is a real game. It's a South Park reference. I, I well, I mean, I remember like them making that like a joke in South Park because I, I mean, I know that, but it's got to be a real game, right? Hold on. Yeah, that's right. I'm looking it up. I have to know. Oh, it actually is real. Oh shit! Yes! What I thought. Oh man, it actually is real. Yeah. Oh it's my god. It just There's a turned it into a joke, and then they canceled the game because of it. Dude, I actually found a let's play of Hello Kitty Island Adventure, which I will be watching tonight. It's from eight years ago. There's another one here from nine years ago. Wow, it's a real game, and let's players actually played it. Oh man, <laughs> now I feel. Okay, I mean, I'm still going to use it as my meme. <laughs> oh, because it's God. like it's Hello Kitty. It's like it's like we intersect with bronies. Oh man, it's a beautiful thing. And apparently, it was an online MMO. Oh yeah, no, it, it's it's probably totally a Korean MMO. Oh my God, what a masterpiece! So wonderful, like like Maple Story. Uh. 
Hey, don't hate on Maple Story. Come on, man. <laughs> I mean, uh... Like, hey, man, don't, don't, like, come on. Hey, like, man, I, don't I, hate I on a totally shitty game that's mostly a cash grab. How dare you? <laughs> hey, man, don't, 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 don't yuck my, my Korean gotcha game. Yum. <sighs> oh, my God. I, uh, I've played it a few times recently. I'll be honest about it. I played it a few times recently. Oh, you can't like, no, I get it. You just some, there's just some habits that's hard to kick like heroin. It's, it's a, it's mostly a nostalgia thing, to be honest. Like I've been mostly trying to like go and and do things that I remember doing in the past and like, Oh, like this used to be my favorite map. And like, I've been going to like the places where I'm like, Oh, do you remember the days when me and all the guildies would like go to this map and we would raid it? And then we would own it and then we would steal all the best items and blah, 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 blah. And like, those were the days. And so I've been doing that every once in a while on Maple Story. I mean, I tried heroin once. Now I'm just trying to cut down on the number of times I've tried heroin. (laughs) Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, please. Don't don't do this to me. Don't don't be like that, man. Come on. Come on, man. You can't. You can't do it. You can't do this to me, man. Love you, man. (laughs) <laughs> why are you gonna break my heart like that why are you gonna break my heart come on man no homo oh <laughs> why not homo yes mm. homo yes homo okay homo then <laughs> all the homo all the homo all the time bro yeah we're uh we're one step away from uh jumping in the jacuzzi naked and giving each other foot massages i mean <laughs> i mean yeah <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's, that's I've told, want, I've told that wanted, story, right? No, no, you have. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, if that's how you wanted to go down with me, I'm, I'm game. <laughs> there is absolutely one, maybe two people that may or may not be listening to this podcast that they're that are like, oh man, you said you wouldn't tell that story, man. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> it's it's okay, guys. I'm nobody. <laughs> oh jesus christ oh i don't think you told that other podcast if you did holy shit the the jacuzzi story the jacuzzi foot massage story it sounds yeah, we, as sexy as the title like like i don't think that it, <laughs> i don't think that ended up on the on, on the uh, two podcasts ago i think oh, that was man. just a real conversation mm, mm. man I we think, should record yeah. more b-roll for pot for for uh, patreon yeah, I still have the old ones. I just there was at one point where um, like some behind the scenes work because um, I actually work. I have a guys. I have a lot of uh, footage and audio that I have uh, held on to, but have not utilized for a variety of different reasons. And Blackmail um, material. Well, not not necessarily all of it. It's not that it's incriminating or anything like that, or like I'd be worried about what people thought. Um, I actually, a while ago, this was a few months ago, cause I remember doing this. Um, I, I wanted to do a B roll collection and I actually, like, I literally pulled all of the old B rolls out and I opened up, you know, um, studio and I was like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can find some bits and pieces and, uh, do it into like a nice little compilation and then maybe release it somehow. Like I wasn't a hundred percent sure if I wanted to release it on YouTube or if I wanted to just make it a Patreon exclusive only. Um, I, I didn't get that far in, in thinking about what I was going to do with it. All I wanted to do was to try and turn it into something. And you have a recording of my story. I don't actually No, I I know which the, the, the ones that you didn't want to tell, um, on, oh, the one, on, yeah, the the ones that I I I kind of hope aren't public record right now. No, those were not recorded as B rolls. I promise you. Um, oh, it's okay. I I, yeah. I trust you. I, I I that was a joke. To be perfectly honest. I mean, I realize <laughs> I realize the FBI is probably still listening in on it. <laughs> Come on, man! You you can't do that to yourself. You know that's not true. Get out of here. Well, the you're FBI's not, listening. You're not that awful of a person. Shut up. <laughs> uh, uh, well, 
Listen, the stuff that could get you in trouble with the FBI, we've already very seriously and very truthfully expressed our opinions about how against that stuff we are. So I'm just yeah, going to go ahead and put that out there for any possible FBI agents that could be listening in, which is yeah. not likely. <laughs> but Yeah, yeah, the really, the really juicy shit I've already public admitted to publicly. Yeah. Well, I know that you told me a couple of stories in confidence, and I can promise you that those were not recorded. Um, right, but yeah, but the FBI isn't going to tag me for that one. No, 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 not at all. Because there, it's every every single one of those stories that we've told each other in confidence uh, were adults in adult situations. None of them were sketchy or dangerous or illegal or anything like that. Uh, but they were sure as hell as embarrassing. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I, mean, uh, I just figured I just figured at some point I got flag- I've been flagged as a domestic terrorist. Google doesn't like you. I know that. Oh, Google <laughs> hates my ass. <laughs> I say the real shit from time to times. <laughs> Google's like, nope. <laughs> Get out of here. Get out of here, son. Um, but yeah, no, what, what I was trying to say was I, I a while ago was trying to manipulate some of the B-rolls into something that was comprehensible. And um, it just didn't work. Um, There wasn't enough material to really work with. And some of it wasn't as good as I remembered it being. So I was just like, I don't want to mess with this. So I've kind of uh, went ahead and put those back into storage. There were like a couple. There were like two that were like so funny that they made me like, like cry from laughing but at the same time, it didn't feel like it was enough material to actually do anything with. So I kind of just was oh, yeah, like, no, like, yeah, like we don't, we don't. I'm just trying to think once we moved to Zencaster, we don't not record a lot. Yeah, that's correct. Like, there, like, like we, we leave a lot of that, like a lot, like a lot of that discussion is actually, actually ends up on the podcast. Yeah. Well, I mean, we'll cut fluff here and there, but usually, like, I promise you, like, for example, there was one podcast that we did where, um, I, <laughs> you know, I, I know which one you're talking about. <laughs> well, there, there was one where, like, this was one that was recent. Um, we did one where I did something like, I want to say I, I spoke for like five or 10 minutes straight about something that was really boring like really really boring and i cut it all out i was like this is bullshit like i don't want this in here like this is just me talking about something stupid like i'm just gonna cut all this out so i did um and then the the missing episode that well a there's the two missing episodes yeah that's right there's two lost episodes now i I always forget about the second one (laughs) There's two. Well, there's the missing episode, and then there's the large chunks of the other episode where I got really bad. Yeah, yeah. There's 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 a couple that are like that. Yeah. Um, but I mean, a lot of the time I try to keep the the majority of everything in, and most of the time I'll only I'll only cut things. There there's like two qualifications of what I cut out is, um, is if you or I say something that could possibly get us into trouble like personal trouble um i will cut that out and if there's something that you or i say that's just absolutely contributes nothing to the subject or the podcast i cut that stuff out too which is why if anybody wants to know i don't mind saying it because it's it's i'm not going to go into the full discussion about it because it's stupid um so for anybody who's been following me probably knows I actually have a lot of knowledge about botany. Um, I used to study botany in college and it was something that I used to be very passionate about. And there's an episode that we did a while ago where I literally talked for like five or 10 minutes straight about a plant. <laughs> like Just like the most like uninteresting, boring bullshit about a plant. And like it contributed absolutely nothing to the original discussion. 
Wait so a second. Just, that, that wasn't in the podcast? No, that was not in. I cut all that out because it was stupid. You, it didn't contribute you, anything. You cut out the banana, the banana spiel? Yes, I cut the, the whole the whole banana uh, oh, the whole I banana talk. I, I cut out. I didn't I didn't even recognize I didn't even realize that that wasn't there anymore. Yeah, if you go, it's the one where we talk about banana runts. And what happens is um, we're talking, but this is when we were first talking about the Japanese candy and stuff like that. And we mentioned banana runs and so there's how much, how much I'm paying attention when I'm re-listening to our podcast. <laughs> it's okay, man. There's like, a point where, where he, where lettuce is talking about banana runs and I was agreeing with him. that They're delicious. And I basically am like, Hey, lettuce, have you ever wondered why banana runs don't taste like actual bananas? And then I go into like a 10 minute speech of like why banana runs don't taste like actual bananas uh, because it's it's based on a really like semi. Well, if you're interested in botany like I am, it's interesting. If you're not interested in botany, it's not interesting at all. Um, I basically explain the idea behind bananas and how they're going extinct and, you know, what the flavor of banana flavored candies based off of and blah, 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 blah. So. I, I did cut all that out. I shared that knowledge with my kid. He got disturbed. He likes yeah. bananas. Yeah. Well, yeah, they're all. Oh, God. It's, oh, man. Am I going to end up telling the whole banana story anyways? God no, damn it. No, no, no. <laughs> I'll stop you right there. Like, it's easily Google. Just, just Google yeah. banana extinction. Yeah. Um, bana- for, for anybody who wants to be aware, um, bananas are slowly going extinct. And uh, scientists are working their asses off to prevent them from going extinct. Um, but it's not working. So, um, the banana, but however, don't worry because the bananas that you buy in supermarkets will always be there. So don't worry about that. Um, but real bananas are going extinct. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I did cut all that out of the podcast cause I thought it was dumb. And uh, <laughs> to, be per- to be perfectly honest, that podcast went long. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, was a long one. So that was that was a uh, that was probably a, a, a righteous cut. Yeah. Well, because like I like the thing is, is like because there have been times where I've had to cut stuff out that like you've done, too. But I'm not like like I'm not like like whenever like whenever I can recognize that, you know, if I do something that's totally pointless or doesn't contribute anything, I don't have a problem with taking that out. Um, but I also do that for you, too. So it's it, it just kind of depends on like what the information it, uh, is, how much it contributes to what we're overall talking about, and like whether or not it's like interesting or not. So yeah, like that know. five minutes I spent almost doxing my family. Yeah, yeah. There was another podcast. Like I knew that Lettuce remembered that one. There was another podcast we did where um, Lettuce straight up doxed himself, doxed him and his almost his entire family. And that was like almost about 10 to 15 minutes that I had to rip right out of the podcast. I was like, this shit's out of here, son. Ain't yeah, no docs tonight, baby. He ripped that and, and, and had to make some really long bras. Actually, yeah. I had, to, mm-hmm. had to invent because because I was off the chain. Yeah, we were both in a weird place that day. <laughs> yeah, I, got, I, I made it weird. It happens, man. It's all good. But that's why that's why uh, I, I, the amazing editor, am here to make our lives so much nicer. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. I got to I got to say, the last episode we did was a lot of fun where we did the waifus and, and uh, I got to do all the editing for. I know it took a little bit longer than normal, but uh, editing in all the all the waifu cuts was really fun. So I really enjoyed that. Yeah, I noticed uh, I noticed that there was pictures. Yeah, man. Yeah. That I also was, like that was a nice touch. Yeah. Well, I thought that like, you know, because some of the some of the stuff we were talking about was kind of vague. So I wanted uh, people to have like a reference point to it. You know, I wanted them to be able to be like, oh, OK. Like, yeah, she's like um, the the milfy Pokemon lady. Like, I didn't even know who that was. So, I mean, I'm glad that I was able to find a, a picture of her and, and throw her up on the screen so people could be like, oh, yeah, she's cute. You know, she's a cutie. Sure. Like, you know. <laughs> and I got to find, you know what? I got to say, um, I managed to find some really um, interesting, <clears throat> interesting pictures of uh, my girl Zinnia, which I was not expecting. <laughs> yeah. So it was actually a lot more difficult to find a normal picture of Zinnia than it was to find 
some of the pictures I was finding of Zinnia. I told you about safe search. <laughs> well, it was kind of fascinating to me because it went and showed me that um, Zinnia is not a very popular character in Pokemon. That really surprised me. Um, she's it's it's that she's older. Yeah, I think she's like a teenager in the story, isn't she? I don't remember. No, I, meant, I meant that she's from the older generations. I guess. I mean, she was in Alpha Sapphire. I mean, uh, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Um, I guess. I don't I know. Mean, I yeah. Like, let let's let's face it. Like, mm-hmm. Pokemon has an it has a, has a target audience, and it kind of sticks to that target audience. Yeah. And it's not, and it's and it's very keen on kind of leaving the the people it used to be for in the dust when they age out. Yeah, I mean, so I get like, that. Like, so like our character, like like we like the we like the remakes because it, it's nostalgia for us. But mm-hmm. a lot of the newer Pokemon play, like a lot of the younger Pokemon players who play who started it, like uh, X Y and Sun Moon. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, they don't care about it. They don't care about Emerald like we care. Yeah, we care, man. We care. <laughs> oh, so ha- half of them, half of them will get curious and they might play Emerald at one point. Yeah. But the problem, the problem is, is Pokemon does a good job of feeding them new content. So where they don't get that. So even if they do get curious, do they really have the time to backtrack that much? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's kind of like the idea of like um, the the um, what is it? The whole methodology behind the customer base of Wizards of the Coast, which is like they expect that, you know, they have a turnover rate of like, what, two years or something like that. So like they expect that their consumer base is shifting out every two years. Like that's yeah. their, the majority of their expectations for the consumers of their games. Yeah. So like, like a certain a certain fraction of their players won't survive their introductory set leaving standard. Yeah, exactly. So, and I mean, I, it makes sense that Pokemon feels the same way. And they've baked that into, and and they kind of baked that into their business plan. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Like from like, you know, like the majority of our consumers are shifting out every two years. So like, we have to expect the idea that we're constantly bringing in new people and they're going to be younger each time as the older people get bored with the series because they're getting older. So, and Pokemon, that that makes perfect sense. That really makes perfect sense because I mean, you know, like, I mean, there's always going to be diehard Pokemon fans, sure, but it's not the majority of your consumer base. The majority of their consumer base is young children who are looking to play their very first RPG, right? Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, I, I I thought that was such a dead on like explanation when you and me talked about it, which was like because I, I told you my story of how like Red and Blue was like the first video game that I ever was good at in my childhood. I yeah. was never good at games until I picked up Red and Blue. And yeah. you were like, no, that makes perfect sense because Red and Blue are baby's first RPG. And when you told me that, I was like, oh, my God, that makes perfect sense. And I've never thought of it that way before. So. Yeah, it's a combat system that that plays like rock paper scissors. Yeah, uh, it's a fairly it's a fairly basic. With, I mean, now it's got a little bit more depth. A uh, uh, gameplay loop. Yeah, yeah. It's baby's first RPG. Yep, yep. But yeah, it's it's definitely makes sense that they're expecting like, you know, the older people to shift out and the newer people to come in, which are probably younger ages. So they always want to make sure that they can adapt their games to that, you know, younger consumer base. And I get that. I get yeah, that, that makes yeah, perfect the sense. game. Yeah. Pokemon is always going to be a game that kind of caters to the eight to eight to seven, like eight to 16, 17 year old. Sure, sure. I think that's totally reasonable. Like, I get it. Like, uh, if, if if you are older than 17, you stick around Pokemon. They're not actively trying to push you out the door. It's just they know what their have, target demographic is. You have to realize that they're not making games for you anymore when you're playing their games. Yeah. Yeah. You're just the, uh, the lucky happenstance. <laughs> yeah, you're the you're the icing on their cake that 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 makes them that extra billion. Yeah. I just, I mean, um, I just can't get behind like following the same formula anymore. I'm so over it. 
like um I mean, I know that like that was supposedly the whole thing behind why Arceus was so good is because it's not the same formula anymore. But I mean, it's it's still somewhat the same formula, but it was different enough to where it felt like a fresh uh, way to go. Right. The The I problem is, is the problem is, is this isn't the first time Pokemon has done this and abandoned it after the fir- after one game. Yeah. So, like, I'm hopeful for Scarlet and Violet to kind of have some of the mixtures between Arceus and uh, Sword Shield. Yeah, okay. But I'm also not, I'm also holding my, not holding my breath for anything from Arceus to show up in Scarlet. Right. Um, I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and say it plain out. I'm not going to buy the game. Like, I mean, well, I mean you don't have a Switch, so. <laughs> exactly, exactly. One thing that kind of blew my mind a while ago like, and I, I was thinking a little bit about this, like, I mean, this was some time ago, like maybe about a, like, I don't know, like a week or two ago. I was watching something that happened to be showing off all of the Pokemon from like Sword and Shield and stuff like that. And I remember going through the list and I was like, what the f*** Bruh. are these things? I like, I remember a time, okay, when it was black and white, like, you know, Generation 5, okay? And I knew every single Pokemon by like name and like type and even sometimes move pool. Like I knew it all. I was like a freaking goddamn encyclopedia on Pokemon back in like generation five. And like now, like, <laughs> like I, I don't know. I, I barely know the X and Y Pokemon. The only reason why I knew X and Y was because I played Omega, you know, omega and alpha um yeah that's why i was kind of familiar with x and y but now like whenever i see like you know a list of the pokemon that came out of sword and shield it's just like i feel like i'm looking at a goddamn like alien race like i'm like i have no idea what the hell any of this shit is and honestly i could care less like i don't want to know what these things are like it's weird like and i can still identify the idea like oh these are pokemon sure but like i mean you know, like any any person who likes Pokemon can clearly see that they're still Pokemon. But like, I'm not going to be that guy who's like, these aren't Pokemon. These this isn't like what Pokemon is supposed to be. Like, I'm not going to be that guy. Like, I can no, no, look yeah, at no. them. Yeah, like, no, yeah. this is very obviously a Pokemon. It's just, you know, I don't know this shit. Like, that's yeah. what it comes down to. I don't know this shit and I don't really want to know this shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I remember, I think I was like watching one of the many videos of people doing like uh smasher pass Pokemon or something like that, uh. Uh, which was like a fad for a little bit. Um, and uh, I remember watching so- a couple of them and they get into like the the generation, whatever um, sword and shield. And I'm like, I don't know what the I'm looking at. <laughs> like, you, all right, you want to smash that? Sure, man. You live your best life, whatever. Um, <laughs> at least, at least it's not. Yeah, I was like, at least it's not the cringy like where they're like, Pokemon trainer waifu list. I'm like, what? I'm like, but what are those guys? You can't do that. You can't I'm like, I'm like, we are those guys. We literally did an episode where we talked about waifus, and we both had like Pokemon characters on our waifu list. Man. Yeah. Well, no, no. Like the thing is, I was very. I was like, I was like, yeah, no, not Misty. Well, no, not Misty, but like, come on, who really likes Misty? Like, you know, if you like Misty, you're a basic bitch. <laughs> like, I'm just gonna put I mean, that out there, there's, man. There's, there's, there's some people with who has a thing for redheads, and Misty's like, like the stereotypical redhead. Yeah, I know, redhead and they're all basic. I know, and they're all basic bitches. <laughs> Like, come on, the, the, the stereotypical redheaded girl who hasn't hit puberty yet and looks like a fifteen-year-old boy. I mean, who wasn't like six years old watching Pokemon and being like, when Misty comes on screen, I feel a tingle in my pants. Like, come on, man, that's some basic shit. Everybody felt that way when they were watching Pokemon at six years old. Come on, bro. Well, I mean, I was <laughs> when I was six years old. There was barely television, so let's. let's I'm, let's I'm slow, sorry. Let's slow our roll here, Junior. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know. I know yeah. what you mean. But I'm just saying, like, that's like the basic bitch one. Like, that's like everybody 
in their childhood who watched Pokemon loved Misty. Like, yeah, I mean, I, I went through that stage too when I was a kid. Like, there's a couple on. of po- like there's a couple of Pokemon YouTubers that I I've watched, like because you know Xavier went through this like Pokemon everything phase. So I'm like, okay, who are the semi safe Pokemon YouTubers? Right. Uh, like, I, if I mean, I guess shout out to Mystic Umbrian because that was the one that I think oh, Xavier I- liked the most. I know that YouTuber. I actually used to watch his content. I remember that guy. Yeah, no, he nice did a call out, man. Yeah, like, like he did a wife list. And I'm like, I'm like, really, guy? Did he pick Misty? <laughs> I, I, I think Misty was. I believe Misty was in his top. Was in his top four. He, well, that's because Mystic Umbreon is a is a Mystic bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, and and I've been like on like a. I've been on a live stream with him. Okay. And I've, and I've had discussions with him and I told him, I was like, I was like, like, look, man, like, I was like, why did you, it's like, everybody does. It's like, is, I was like, yeah, the, the, like the wife, why did you do that? And I'm like, eh, cause everybody does it. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, but be the guy who doesn't. Yeah. I was like, it kind of made you look a little, he's like, I understand it made me look a little creepy, but it's Pokemon. What am I going to do? I'm like, I'm like, not what am I going to do? Not do it. That's what you're going like, to. I was like, you know, like try to like try like, and like he he actually was like 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 had Melody up there up high, mm-hmm. and he's like he's like because and he's like Melody because I because she's like and, and his like thing was like she's the most safe, and I'm like <laughs> right on, right on man, right on. <laughs> you right. <laughs> you right. <laughs> <laughs> no no fault there uh, i just like one of the things that really pissed me off was like and i mean there's no reason to be pissed off about it because it's like the classic like youtuber thing it's like you know like if you're a youtuber you gotta like it's like oh you want to be successful then you gotta follow the yeah. fads right yeah you gotta, you gotta, gotta be a fad follower you gotta chase those trends to be algorithmic to be algorithmically yeah. positive but the thing is is my overall view and i mean i i can understand why people like you know like, I mean, I get it, but like my view is that so that was a trend that was started by a trend setter. They weren't like a person who was following a trend. They were literally a trend setter and then created the trend and then everybody started following it. So like my view is like, I don't want to be the trend follower who's going to like follow what everybody's doing because it's the most popular thing. And I understand like why I mean, people want to do that. I get it. Everybody, I get it. Everybody's goal. Everybody's goal is to be, is be, to virally become the trend setter. Yeah. The problem is, is the problem is, is the guy doing list, the, the person doing listicle, the first person who did listicles on YouTube didn't mm-hmm. get the, didn't, didn't just, just, didn't just naturally come up from the idea. I mean, people were doing listicles everywhere. Yeah, the listicles are are the are the like are easy. Co- it, it's kind of mimetic. Yeah, how how well a listicle will get ingrained mm-hmm. in a in a in a content consumer's brain. Right. It it's kind of disgusting how how low grade and easy it actually is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I mean, but but because it's been that listicles have always been a thing yeah no i mean i get that it's just like like the thing is 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 that i that i see it is like you know it's like you see the one person who sets the trend like gets it done and then it's like maybe it's it's funny for like a couple and then after that it's just like it's everywhere and you're just like please just stop like i can't like i can't watch this for the hundred thousandth time like, and just because you're a different person doesn't make this content different. You like, know. just because, like, you're you're the, the you know, B-list celebrity <laughs> who's, who's deciding to do the same bullshit that yeah, has, like, because... more or less the same exact answers with maybe a few different answers at different yeah. numbers. Just, be- just because John Oliver decides to do a listicle doesn't mean he's not uh, Dave Lemon. <laughs> Yeah, man. Yeah. Let's face it. So, that, that, that was Letterman's shtick. I mean, we we kind of we kind of did a, 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 a like that waifu episode was, was very pretty close. close. To being, was yeah. pretty close to just a straight up smash or pass. I was just to be honest, it wasn't intended to be smash or pass. I was just genuinely fascinated 
that you had waifus like that was for, literally for some reason that was mind blowing to me. I couldn't believe that at the time. I mean, I mean, which it was, is why it was, I wanted to discuss it. I mean, it was interesting content. Yeah. <laughs> well, because like, you just don't seem like a waifu guy to me. Like, I don't know why. And the, like, and the thing is, it's like I was inviting it because like I was like, sure, like if we want to have a discussion about this, but let's let's just kind of own the fact that it's going to end up being a uh, smash or pass. Or, yeah. But I mean, I called it. I called it uh, Mary Bruh. Hill, which is basically, <laughs> which is basically like Smasher Pass with a gray area. Yeah, I get um, that. Like I was, like I was invent- inviting it. It's like you know, if you want to find out more, uh, you know, like, please call this toll free number. <laughs> yeah, if your if your desire to know more intensifies. Yeah. Um, well. I was, but what? I was inviting I was inviting the Smasher Pass episode because I just was like I was like, well, this is where this is going anyway. So let's just lean into it. Yeah, man. But to your but to your credit, it kind of didn't become that. It was just it was just like you tried to poke fun at me for having waifus. Yeah, I just it was just I don't know why. I just couldn't like before we did that episode, I could literally not imagine you having waifus. Like it just didn't seem like and I mean I get it. Like I mean it to a degree it makes sense that anybody, you know, it's kind of like the idea of like, Everyone you know, has, even every everybody has waifus. Well, it's kind of like the idea of like everybody has like a crush actress or a crush actor. You know, like where they're like, "Oh, this one actress or this one actor is like my Ricky sure um i don't think i have one anymore it's because i i i don't love live action anymore <laughs> um okay. i mean it used to be well i mean for me i could 100% tell you it used to be christina Ricci. i used to have a major crush on Kristen bell um and then i gave up on that after a while um uh, like I, I mean now it might be uh jen tilly but yeah did, wait a minute! Didn't we do an episode where we talked about our celebrity crushes? I mean, I, I mean, I mean, that was kind of the would let sit. Episode. That's true. That's true. Um, and we kind of we, we've we've were asked to do another one of those and maybe have yeah. a guest. Well, because we didn't even go through the whole list that we originally intended when we did the would let sit. We got like through half of the list. <laughs> uh, I mean, I I fired up like. I didn't prep, so I fired yeah. up. I fired up my list, and I think we went through all but maybe three or four of them. Mm. My list was a little bit longer, and I was kind of like trying to pick the the best you ones. Prepped. Time. You prepped. Yeah, I did because well, remember when we when you and me were discussing this? I sat on that idea for like a month before yeah. we actually did it. Um, and you, I remember, I was like, yeah, I thought about this about a month ago, and you were like, you th- you were sitting on this for a month? What the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> oh man um but yeah uh you know i i think that i think um this might be a good time for us to wrap it up what do you think yeah i mean uh to 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 like circle back to our original point yeah. uh, if, you're lis- if you're <laughs> if you if you're listening to this and you own a pc and you have a steam account uh you should definitely consider buying a uh, core keeper and giving it a go. And if you like it, uh, there's the link to Hab's discord yeah. in the doobly doo, uh, yeah. join the discord. And if public servers, if, if public dedicated servers are a thing, mm. I will have, I will have built one and yeah. I will give you permission to join us and maybe, we can we could do some stuff together. Yeah, maybe um, maybe we could have uh, somebody else come up on our the current base that I've got going, uh, which uh, Lettuce has been helping me with. And uh, we could have a couple extra people. I think we can have like four or five people on eight. like the, the eight people. Eight people says Lettuce. Um, yeah, it's a well, according according to the game, it's supposed to be one one uh, one through eight uh, one to eight. Yeah, on a so, game. I mean, if uh, if you're playing Core Keeper and you're as into it as we are, um, and uh, you know you're listening to this podcast and uh, you're a, a well-rounded member of society, <laughs> um, you can you uh, we might give you a chance to come and join us if you're interested. So uh, you know, yeah. slip into my DMs, uh, girl or boy, and uh, we'll we'll talk about it. So there you yeah. Go. 
Um, but yeah, I think this is a good chance to uh, kind of wrap this up. So I'm going to go ahead and say all the wonderful things, which is, uh, First of all, if you haven't already, uh, go ahead and leave us a wonderful, delicious like. Uh, maybe leave a tasty, succulent comment down in down below. Um, and if you're not already subscribed, we're at 190. 190, guys! Like, that's what I'm celebrating over. 190 subscribers. Bring us to 200. Let's go. Yeah, so imagine, if you're not- the, imagine the realm of cocaine he will do if he hits 200 <laughs> subscribers, man. I'll uh, sniff it off of a hooker's chest with a hundred dollar bill. Let's go. Chest, <laughs> chest is for suckers. You do it off their ass crack. <laughs> oh man. I uh, want to put my face on some boobies. Anyways, continuing on, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that we can make our way to 200. Uh, check in the description below for all the wonderful links, such as PayPal Streamlabs. All donations are greatly, greatly appreciated. Um, feel free to join the Discord, as we mentioned earlier. The link should be down below. And uh, also, wonderful Teespring merch. Um, I'm working on some new Teespring stuff. I know I keep saying that, and I'm sorry that I haven't actually updated it. It's been a lot of work, but the current merchandise is great. Check it out. Go and support us. We have Imaginary Boys merch, and we have a variety of other merch. Check it out. It's a wonderful time. It's Imaginary good Boys mug is very good. Very yeah. good if you're, if you're a coffee drinker and like dick butts. Yeah, that's right. We got a secret hidden picture in there, and see if you can find it quickly when you get the mug. Uh, send us a picture of you finding the secret hidden picture on the uh, on the Imaginary Boys mug. Yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, I'd love to give a wonderful shout out to the amazing Patreon members, which include Bo Falcon, uh, Fajuk Enterprises, James P., the lovely, lovely Miss Rebecca, as well as the wonderful Mr. Scorpio guys. Thank you guys so much for supporting us on a regular basis. We love doing this and love providing content for you. So everything that you send us on the Patreon is extremely helpful. Thank you so much. Um, but I think that's pretty much it. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to say, Mr. Lettuce? Shapoopy. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and with that, Shapoopy, we have been the Imaginary Boys. Good night. Hey.